Last time we had a look at a Samsung Q7 Series 7 TV and this One Connect box and the invisible connection cable, which is eight fibers, goes between this box where you connect all your stuff and the TV that this plugs into, which allows you to have all your cables routed out of sight with just this going to the TV screen. Very nice system, nice thin, quite flexible fiber cable. Since then, another one of these One Connect boxes has showed up, and this one's a little bit different. It's for a different region. This one's made in South Africa, and it doesn't have the satellite input, but it has component and composite inputs. Which is interesting. Um, I don't think we really need to take this apart because it's going to be pretty much the same as what we saw when we looked inside this one in the previous video. But instead we've got something else to take apart. This is this is a newer One Connect box for possibly the current model 8K TVs or the last year's maybe. Dunno. So again, this has a cable which goes to the panel, but now they call it one invisible connection. This thing here is an invisible connection, but it doesn't carry any power to the TV, so you still have to plug that in. Now they put power over the same cable. So now it's called one invisible connection instead of just Invisible connection because you only need one now, but it's quite horrible. It's very short, only two meters now, where it used to be the default was five meters, which you rolled the rest up on this spool thing, and uh, you could get them in 10 and 15 meter lengths. Now it comes with this two meter, very thick, very stiff cable. And if you want the longer ones, you have to buy it separately. And I think, I'm pretty sure this is not fiber, which is why it's so short. Uh, it's just, well, we'll crack it open and have a look. But if you want to get the fiber ones, you have to pay a lot of money and you buy them separately instead of them being included with the TV, which is a bit disappointing because I thought I was getting a fiber one and we could take a look at it, but we have this, but we'll take a look at it anyway. So they've changed the plug, it's now got some extra pins, these larger ones for the power and then the rest for the data. And you can see wide pins there for the power. Otherwise all the I.O. stuff is the same, there's three USB ports, four HDMI's. This one's got the satellite and the aerial again, and the optical out for sound and LAN. Power comes in here. And that's the only power you need since this will send the power to the TV. Uh, ratings here. The output, 55 volts, 420 watts. Nice. And then the overall input, 490 watts. Which reminds me, on these ones here, the one we took a look in the other day was rated at 40 watts input power. This one here is 30. So, there you go. Possibly because it doesn't have this uh, 13 or 18 volts at 0.4 amps for presumably this powering the satellite, the LNB thing on the satellite. I think that's what it's called. Because that probably adds up to another 10 watts if you're using 18 volts at 0.4. Presumably that's where this one is less because it doesn't have that satellite input. Anyway, let's take this thing apart and see what's in it. It's really heavy. It also comes with this cable, which is a very short version of the same thing. And you use that in the situation where you have this attached to the backs of the stand that the TV is on. And I think then there's covers that go over it. For the new 8K TVs, which I think you can only get in huge sizes because otherwise what's the point? But what's the point anyway because 8K 
who has 8k content to play on it. Anyway, we'll take it apart and we'll see what's in it. It's probably at least half power supply because it's supposedly they've done something which makes the one connect cable safe to have so much current flowing through it. Let's have a look. Let's see how much current would flow through the one connect cable if it was 420 watts, 55 volts, watts divided by volts, 420 divided by 55, so 7.6 amps needs to flow through the cable to power the TV. That's a pretty hungry TV. I suppose that's what you get when you have those huge ones, 80 inches or whatever. I've not looked inside this thing yet, I've been saving it for the video. Presumably it's going to be all clipped together as well and not just going to open up like that other one was also clipped together. No, where does this thing open? What opens? Again, it looks like it's made of an IR transmissible material. You can see a very slight purpley glow on it. So this must have IR transmitting stuff inside it. And the only movement I can see here is this lid and it looks like it peels up there so we might have to get some prying screwdrivers into there Let's see if we can crack it open I don't have a TV for this one just got this box so we can't try it out yes yeah, so I was thinking with those other one connect box for the 4k TVs for this I was thinking why don't we try soldering an HDMI cable onto the data out pins of this and see if we can use it with a different screen but since I've been playing around with this with the TV it seems this isn't as standalone as it could be and it does rely quite heavily on the TV being there and connecting to it probably because the well not only because the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth things are in the TV and the remote receiver so, and when you um, even if you have this recording to USB off the TV and you unplug the cable the recording stops and I think this just goes into some standby state so it doesn't seem that it would be that easy to get it to run without the TV it's supposed to go on so which is a bit disappointing they've probably purposely done that and they've probably also put some encryption over that, that data because they want to make it difficult for everyone the same way that the recordings it makes to the USB drive are also encrypted and you can't play them on any other device. You can't even play one that's recorded on this box with this one. It just comes up with protected or something. I tried it. Anyway, let's look in here. Whoa, look at that. What have we got? Got thermal interfaces. Wow, so it looks like it's mostly power supply. I'm like, all of that is power supply. The input, hard out input filtering there. And it looks like that's all one board there. And then there's this cable which goes over to this board here, which has surprisingly little on it compared to the other one. Ah, there's chips on the other side, okay. Well, we'll take all this apart. So the underside of the lid, the way, so that went around that way, it's just a sheet, but then there's tin underneath it, so they're heat sinking through this insulating sheet onto the top cover. Aha, we can see there, there's an IR emitter there. Is that the only one? It might be, because this will be all uh, mains, AC. There's probably another one over here somewhere. Oh, it could be on the other side. Okay, well, let's peel this these bits off so we can investigate what's in there. There's some tape over that one. Sure, if we need to be too careful with this because I don't have a TV for it. 
Not likely I'm going to get one either because people normally get rid of stuff because they smash the screen, which is not this. Let's see what kind of connector this is. Quite grunty, 420 watts worth of connector there. Double row thing. On this end too, but the board's too flexible. I need to get leverage on that. Okay. Cable assembly. Now they give you a pin out there, which is pretty nice of them. So you get B grounds, an on signal, and possibly analog 13 volts, IR, and you got V driv. Lots of V drivs and F grounds, V driv, F ground. So it's presumably. Those F grounds and V drives are the, the 55 volts that comes out and goes to the panel. That 13 volts will be what's powering this electronics that's over here, the local stuff. Ah, so over here there's a rating table. So there's two versions by the look of it. P65SB8N and 9 in, and that does either 7 or 8 amps at 60 volts. So I don't know what one we have, how do you determine that? Ah, oh, here we go, there's a sticker over here. So this is the 9 in version, so that's the most grunty one. Ah, and there's a test point here. We can check it, presumably. 50.4. So it started out as being 60. Wow, look at that, there's four bridge rectifiers. They are in a row, they all joined in parallel. And then there's a whole bunch of devices on that heatsink there. And there's a whole bunch more on that one there. We're gonna have to get this out and give it a good investigation. So presumably there will be an, this will be all an active front end. I suppose all the bridge rectifiers are in parallel. A bit weird, isn't it? Maybe it's a two-phase active active boost converter thing into these caps uh, we zoomed in a bit much so I my expectation is we've got input filtering then the rectifiers the power factor booster inductors there and switching devices along there for probably a two-phase system so they switch alternatively get more energy and DC caps there and then this part over here will be the converter that takes the high voltage DC down to the 50 volts that might all be a two-phase thing again with the two transformers and mm, another thing there not sure what that would do and one there so one Unless that's a gate drive power supply, perhaps, and that will be the auxiliary power supply that makes that 13 volts off the main DC. Probably what's going on there. Let's get these boards out. So if it wasn't for the power supply stuff, this one connect box would be very small. You only need that much space. I need two screws, two more thermal pads. Oh, look at that. That got chewed up, it was never sitting right. That's a bit... stink. That was supposed to be leaning on that, but when it got put in it just... folded back on itself. Okay. We can see the power tracks coming over from this header that went to the power supply board. And they go onto those four terminals there. Well, I wonder if it's two 55 volt power supplies. That's possible, is it? They do it as two separate supplies? Yeah, maybe they do it as two separate supplies to get around some standard or whatever. And that probably means they, maybe it's an easier way of using thinner conductors in it as well. In the, in the cable. So what's under this? Yeah, it's just a little thing. Okay. What's under this then? Oh, a special Samsung thing is there. A... D9 or something. A version 0 DNIE trademark, and that's an analog devices. Something rather, probably a HDMI 
2 receiver, something like that. That seems to bring everything in from the HDMI connectors. And then out of that, into this. It's pretty well simplified, isn't it? And then we've got a bus load coming down to things over here. Something comes out of this. I don't know how the signal comes out of the tuner thing. What kind of format would that be in? Ah, oh, yeah, LAN. So that was some of those pairs that go all the way down. And the optical, some kind of power supply thing there. A bit more power supply stuff. USB, I wonder, are those USB doofies? Possibly, it's difficult to know where the tracks go. I wonder if there's options there, because it talks about one connect something, probably, OCL, 8K, 4K. It's got a size and a date. A couple of years old. Well, end of 2020, start of 22 now, a bit over a year old. This is cutting edge-ish. And yeah, we need to look up what those chips are, and what that one there is. That's some kind of ROM there. Probably has some program in it for that. There's another ROM. So what kind of signals go down this one connect? Presumably it would be very similar to the other ones we looked at. Again, it looks like it's got four pairs going out. And then two coming back, perhaps, with the capacitors. And then another single conductor there on the end. Don't think there's much more going on on the other side. There's that one, which is a bit thicker. That might be a power supply for when you use the optical versions. Because they'll need to power the optical transmitter. Bottom of the board doesn't have much active stuff going on there. Something there. Might be some kind of a power supply doofy. Yeah, look at that. So that's the tuner. We've got this really tiny one there where there's options for longer ones and wider ones. There's also again that slot for the encryption card thing they have in some countries. And it looks like there's also the component and composite connectors. This is AV and that says EXRXTPEXTXTP. Maybe, I don't know. But the tuner block, that has two pairs coming out of it. So maybe it's a digital tuner which brings a, a stream of data out of it. Not sure, I wonder if there's, we can look something up on this. It's got some part numbers. So maybe we can look up what what that tuner is. Tuner, not the type you eat, but the, the tuning. I don't know, it probably has a proper name, an RF module. Let's we should pop it open and have a look inside it. There's some little chippies, and it might have multiple layers of boards in it because... Oh, uh, no, it's just got... Oh, uh, th those are just those headers. Okay, so it's probably just one board. Some sort of data one and a power and something else one. So those traces go down to there. And then uh, there's some coupling components there. Uh, and then they turn into those ones, which then travel reach distances over to this main large IC. There's a lot of tracks there going to all the stuff. Uh, because that thing is all individual wires going to it. And then a whole bunch there which go to whatever that stuff is. I think it's more going into this. Let's take the power board out and then we'll look at that and then I'll look up some some part numbers and we'll discuss the circuit a bit more. So unlike the small one connect box, this one has a grounded AC input. The other ones are all just two, two wire with no ground. The TV is also two wire, no ground. I think it's because it's a lower power device. So it hasn't crossed that threshold to need ground to decouple RFI. Okay, there's got formal coding. A lot of it. Not on everything, but on a lot of things. If you had a quick look around this stuff, 
found other LEDs, which are probably the other IRs for the back part. There's one there and one there. Fairly sure that's the same little IR things that we saw in the other one connect box. <laughs> See, there's no indication that those are LEDs, and this is all IR transmission material. So it's likely then that that's what's going on. IR LEDs there. Now, taking a look over this board, I haven't worked out much yet, but it looks like. From what I can see that that's a CT for measuring the current that's going into the primary side of the main converter and it, that might also be powering stuff. It might also be used as a power supply because it seems to have two secondaries on it that might provide, create a gate drive power supply. There's some optic couplers there across the isolation. There's a whole bunch there as well. There's interesting spaces that are soldered down to the board, which each have designators. The auxiliary power supply from this transformer up in the corner here seems to be just a single output of 13 volts. It's got a, a test point there. So it looks like it's two, two phase outputs with their own rectifiers that goes into one output. That's how that appears. With the center ground flipping over to there, to there. And then the two diodes mounted on the heatsink, which makes sense because there's only one output capacitor, so it would just be the 13 volts. And there's the PS on signal, which they talk about there. PS on. I haven't traced it out, but I would assume that goes to this relay, perhaps, and probably an enable signal. I haven't worked that out completely yet, but. I assume they'd have the, the boost converter off when it's just running in standby mode and when the TV is not on. And it, so just this will be running off the rectified mains DC bus and powering this board to whatever it needs to do or be asleep. And then when you actually power up the TV panel, it will click that in, start up the boost converter and then start this main converter running to power the TV. That's what I assume. I'm going to take a more closer look at this and then we'll come back and explore it a bit more. Okay, I've looked up a few things. That little tiny chip there we saw is this TLV759P 1 amp high accuracy adjustable LDO in small package size. So it's a little linear regulator. Probably powers the tuner module which needs a nice smooth power supply. Then we got these two chips here which are four port hubs. The Genesis Logic's premium four port hub solution. Quite exciting and it looks like that one goes to that port there, USB port. That chip there, which is another four port USB hub, goes to those two ports there. And then the port zero, if we look at it in the arrangement that it is on the board, the port zero down here, which wraps around and goes off to this CPU thing up here. I've been trying to look this up, which is analog devices chip for presumably some type of HDMI multiplexer, but I can't read the numbers, so I'm going to have a, another go at that and then get back to you. Here's the TV that this one connect box we're looking at goes with. Only $5,499.99, down from $8,999.99. Pretty good deal. Not sure what the point of 8K is. Can anything produce that sort of picture? We don't even have 4K broadcast yet. So the only really interesting thing on this page is this is the box that we're looking at, and it can be mounted on the back of the TV stand. So given how huge this thing is, it's an enormous TV. That's what this shorter cable is for, which you can see there in the picture going up. And then there's some sort of cover that was there over the terminal area. And presumably, not shown here, is the power input connector down the bottom there. I assume that would be down the bottom. If we lay this out how it would be in the system. That like that. Yeah, that that goes like that. 
this cable which plugs into there which goes up and into the, the back of the screen so then yeah your power input would be at the bottom a really thin power cable so then maybe it's a right angle thing that they give you so it can come out on an angle I suppose that makes sense but their TV works by magic you don't have to join anything else up to it I suppose you can have Wi-Fi is that what you watch TV with these days? couldn't find any information about this tuner I thought I'd found when I typed in this number it came up with some service manuals which I thought meant that I'd have the tuner in them but looking at the schematics in the service manuals it didn't appear to be this one but anyway it's some sort of digital data coming out in what looks like differential pairs and there's probably other control signals there I couldn't find anything about this analog devices chip which was a bit disappointing it is presumably just a four input so that's the part number on the chip couldn't find anything AD55 or this number or that number didn't seem to come up with anything presumably it's a four input HDMI 2 or 2.1 switch well, I assume that would be because unless this TV can show video from more than one of the HDMI inputs at a time all you'd need there is an HDMI switch so that just routes it to one HDMI input on this processor chip which I couldn't also find any real information it looks like you can buy it for 41 euros they call it an IC decoder and then that SDP uh, that was the tuner in the in a TV service manual and it had several parts several i squared c buses and then on this bigger bigger part there's some data lines by the look of it and also a composite output which is interesting and i looked at this very carefully and there is a mention of that there it says tuner cvbs so perhaps when the tuner's in analog mode a composite video signal comes out of there which it also just suggests there's an audio output to go with that presumably and so that made me wonder if if is that the reason why the ones that have these two inputs don't have the AV composite input and the one that has only one tuner that does have the component and composite inputs so it made me think maybe they share it maybe this the standard Samsung processors only take one composite input so if you got this tuner then you don't get your external one maybe just a theory although they can just put in a switching chip anyway I think that's this board covered seems to have a lot less going on compared to what we found in this other older one connect box and this is supposed to be all modern in 8k now last time when I was discussing the lanes in the fiber connector I for some reason was talking about needing five lanes for HDMI or DisplayPort assuming that that's how they transmit the data across this one connect cable but it's actually only four lanes for those interfaces I think I might have been confusing it with LVDS or some other thing like what you used, used to have to connect LCD panels in laptops anyway let's have a look at this board and what bits and pieces it has okay so we'll start at the beginning the input stage here which is an active power factor correcting boost converter it's got a controller chip there which is a these days it's TI UCC 28064 a natural interleaving transition mode PFC controller with high light load efficiency yeah, I did look at this relay a bit closer on the input there and the relay bypasses this resistor which looks like it's 2.5 ohms maybe or it might be 13 ohms and 2.5 watts anyway that's what that relay does and it's not controlled by the anything on this connector that I could see so it must be done some other way by some automatic sensing thing so the the way that PFC input PFC works it's got that row of four bridge rectifiers and those are all joined in parallel there 
And then on the output positive, there's two inductors. It gets split into two inductors. And then there's two different sets of FETs. And then the standard rectifier diodes, not um, not using FETs there. Uh, the DC bus capacitors, which I drew a bit weird. And then there's a 6.3 amp fuse down there that brings the positive probably 450 something volts over to the output converter. So that circuit roughly follows what's shown on this application example here with the two inductors there, 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 and the FETs, the two diodes, the output capacitors, various voltage sensors. And you can see there they've got auxiliary windings or secondaries on the inductors which are used for zero crossing detection. And that's the same on here. The main terminals of the inductors are up here. The positive DC comes along this track, goes there, and then flips over to the other one using a cr track crossing through there. And then the two FETs join onto from there and there, down to there, two groups of FETs, down to the negative rail, coupled through there. The auxiliary or secondary windings is one there, goes down, and then the other one, there are tracks that hop through under there and then come up on each side. So they are sensing both the output of that. The diodes that they have shown there are there. And then there's a few ferrite cores around wire links and then it goes into the DC bus capacitors those two there with their little caps on and those are wired in parallel there and there then finally the fuse very standard boost converter fits turn on a magnetic field is built up in an inductor from the current flowing fits turn off and then the current flows through these diodes and into the capacitors and that will be happening alternatively for these the interleaved operation so you can get more current flowing and smoother ripple then we got the the output power supply i don't know what you call it that's the input boost converter then you got the isolation and output main power supply there's two power supply controller chips there and i was a not able to find any information for one of them and the other one very limited information and then there's another chip there on the outputs which we can look at, which is an advanced synchronous rectifier controller for LLC resonant converters, which gave me a bit of a hint to what to start looking for, finding out what those were. What it has on the outputs of the transformers is instead of di a diode rectifier, it's got FETs, and that chip controls them to switch on at the right time. That provides better efficiency because you get the low on state resistance of the FET instead of the forward voltage drop of diodes. So there's a row of those down there on the heatsink. And then there's the output caps there. A little chippy to control them. Then as for these, the one I found was this. So the, the Fuji, Fuji Electric, just that. A current resonant IC up to 600 volts with X cap discharge and there's another FA FA6 B22 and in this one here there's an example circuit and it uses a similar chip FA620B and it shows an application of that here using a half bridge then the primary of the transformer and then an inductor in series down to the, the negative rail. Wasn't able to find out any real data on these chips, just the little bit in those documents. The circuit is a LLC resonant converter and I've drawn that out. I think that's correct. It was quite difficult to know because the inductors transformers are such a low resistance that it's hard to tell exactly what things connected to where to properly work it out i'd have to desolder the parts so i can see where the tracks go on the other side but there's quite a few hidden by components this is what i believe is happening here we've got 
two sets of MOSFETs there, two half bridges. The one that drives the small transformer for the like for the auxiliary 13 volts supply. And then we've got the other one, this main one, for driving the main converter for the 50 or 60 volt supply at high power and that has the two fits and then the center of that comes out goes into the primary of one of the transformers out the other side of the primary into the next transformer out of that through an inductor here and then from the other side of the inductor goes up to two capacitors in parallel which is here 22 they're both 22 nanofarads and then from that back to the DC bus capacitors so we've drawn that out here half bridge the two transformer primaries the inductor the capacitors and then back to minus DC switch on the fit that one will be off current flows through there magnetic fields get built up capacitor charges a bit that one gets turned off, that one gets turned on the, due to the inductors, the current continues to flow now it's stuck in this loop here, or the magnetic fields will decay and when that reaches a level this will switch around, that will go off, that will go on and the current will start increasing again building up magnetic field um, there's probably a current sensing thing in this path or they're using the secondary side so there's an auxiliary winding off the inductor I think there's actually two of them oh no that's that's the mounting for the heatsink there and there okay so there's an auxiliary winding there off the inductor which has got various things on it and there's also an auxiliary winding off one of the transformer primaries which is those two pins there which are left open on the other one so they're probably sensing the current indirectly through either that or that or possibly both because they seem they might be wired in series so that's probably why there's no voltage sensing resistors in the path not that I could see and then the output is a it seems to be a split output with the positive directly connected through to the capacitors off the transformer heaps of wires there going through the other side and I think that pops out there and there I think I measured so then the negative side goes one part through to those fits and then the other part maybe that was that one goes through to the other fits and they're switching on and off at the right times under the control of that and some various voltage sensing type things to do the rectification I think that more or less covers the basic function of this board power supply probably very efficient it's quite amazing though that the TV needs 420 watts to run that doesn't seem very efficient and I guess it's a huge one uh, I was going to say that's it for this one connect box, but with one more thing we need to do. We need to crack this open and have a look inside, see what the deal is. Because I was expecting this to be a fiber, and I was very disappointed. Because I'm pretty sure it isn't. I was also expecting it to be five meters long, and I was thinking we should try turning it into an optical... HDMI cable that would have been exciting but we ended up with this thing which is short and probably not optical so let's cut it open and have a look uh, find a way of parting this housing it looks like it's glued okay, find a way of parting this housing which is looks like two halves glued together and it made some encouraging noises oh look at that Ooh, the buttons come out. Yeah, these are weird buttons. When you push them, oh, maybe that's not that weird. When you push them, that little clip moves outwards. 
Oh, it's all sealed up. Oh, and it also looks like it's spot welded. Where that other one we were looking at the other day, the fiber one that was soldered so we could undo it. That's disappointing. I wonder if it's all been filled up with glue. It might peel off anyway. So this is the TV end. Which they use this flat version rather than this contacts on both sides, not as flat version. Let's see what happens if we get this unclipped. Uh, the problem is going to be that that is all sealed up from injecting that strain relief in there. I wonder how far in the middle goes. It clipped itself back together. I have to cut into this to see what's going on there. Looks like the metal doesn't go in too far. So we just cut that little edge off there. And we should be able to get it off. Ah oh, no. I think there's a tab which comes down from there. Maybe this is going to be destructive. Some other type of cutting things. Uh, okay. So there appears to be a band, a band that's been soldered around, around the cable. There must be a shield joined on. Okay. The cable's shield must be joining onto this. And then that has a tab that goes up onto that. That's not going to be very easy to get off. Maybe we can just cut through that. We can solder it back if we need to. Here we go. Now the problem is we've got that spot welding. Oh, this is good. This is good because it actually tells you what the signals are. I don't know if we need to take the other side off. Especially while we open this side then because that's the side that's got the, the business on it. it. tells you there what's going on. Probably HDMI then. So there's an RX and a TX there. And they are in a different type of shielding to these ones. I think, I'm not sure about that. TC, which would be clock, and then T012, which will be the three datas. And I'm pretty sure that's HDMI. And then you've got a 13 volts and active one, act, activate one connect and activate TV, presumably. So there'll be some sort of serial data to do with all the infrared remotes and Wi Fi and all that business. And then this will be the display data. And then there's four conductors for the power. There's two grounds, and then there's whatever that is, the power supply. They call it 85. P85. Voltage 1, voltage 2, I guess. And power ground, power ground. And so it's got to have about 7 amps going through it. I wonder if the cable gets warm. Yeah, they call it there a TV copper cable. So now we've got to get hold of a, one of the fiber ones and take a look inside that. So to finish off, here we have the HDMI pinout. And we can see there, it makes sense. We've got clock, plus minus, and then data 0, 1, 2. Fairly confident then that these one connect units send an HDMI data to the panel. But they might encrypt it. Now I really want to solder an HDMI plug on there and see if we can actually view that. We won't be able to use this one unfortunately because I don't have any type of 8K display and the output data here will just be permanently formatted to match that display. I don't think there would be, you know, it's, it's not going to work with a different resolution display but for the other one connect box we might be able to do it. But, as we saw already, you have to have the TV plugged into the other end to actually turn this thing on and get it happy. 
may be able to still try it, but we'll just have to solder. We we'll have to solder into the connector, either inside the box or crack it open. Yeah, it's a pity I don't have a spare cable like this one. I've got at least two cables there to play with, but I don't think we can do it because I don't have any device that can accept an 8K input. And I also don't have the rest of the TV, which you'd need to activate it. Anyway, hopefully that was an interesting look inside a fairly modern TV Samsung One Connect box with quite intense power supply. There you go.